The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Plant the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace, and in the renewal of our lives make known your glory, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Consider your own call, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards, not many were powerful, not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are not, to reduce to nothing things that are, so that no one might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, in order that as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. The word of the Lord.
When Jesus saw the crowd, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and talk to them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of Christ. Especially when you consider that the word that we have translated as blessed, if you just directly translate it, and blessed is a, a good translation of it, but if you directly, literally translate it, it means happy. Makarios in Greek, happy. Happy are the peacemakers. Happy are those who are poor in spirit. Happy are those who mourn. Seems back in front. Happy are those who are sad. Happy is something that I think we all want to be in some way, shape, or form. I'm from the United States, as most of you probably know. Uh, and um, if you don't know, because I told you, you may be able to tell because of the accent. Here I have to mention, growing up, my high school girlfriend, uh, I was talking to her about doing a, 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 a play and how I had to lose the Wisconsin accent for the sake of this play because I was playing a New Yorker. She said, accent? We don't have an accent. <laughs> there it is. Anyway, um, I'm from the States where, of course, it's life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Right? It's an important fundamental thing. We want to be happy. We want our, our life to be filled with happiness. And here it is, the Son of God telling us how to be happy. Sounds good. What does he say? Read that off just a time. Blessed, Makarios, happy are those who are poor in spirit. How is it if you're poor in spirit you can be happy? I mean, we're not talking literal financial poverty, although there is a sense of that as well, but primarily poor in spirit. How can I be happy if my spirit is poor? If I don't have this energy and this verve, if I don't have a great sense of, of power and purpose, how can I be happy? What if someone who doesn't have all of those things, what if someone who doesn't have that self-drive, on what do they depend? Only on God. Only on God. I cannot move the world myself. I cannot overcome the evil of the world myself. Good heavens, we've been given fresh examples daily of the evil of the world. I can't accomplish this alone. I must depend upon God. 
I must seek something stronger. I must seek something purer. I must seek something greater than myself. And leaning upon that, leaning upon that not even just alone, but leaning upon that in the community of the church, then there is strength. And that is happiness. That is happiness to know that my little poverty of soul needn't revolutionize the world. That my little poverty of soul doesn't have to move mountains. All it needs to do is to open up and be a channel for the great soul of God. And that is happiness to cooperate in that. To be part of that bigger suffering. Happy are those who mourn. We don't want sadness in our lives. None of us do. We all get our share. It comes to everyone. Because the human life is fragile. Joys and happiness and, 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 and fabulous things come too. Don't get me wrong. But sadness comes to everyone's life. Happy are those who are sad. Spiritually read. The, the tradition reads it this way. Happy are those whose joys are not in this world. Whose sense of fullness and completeness, whose sense of self, whose sense of purpose, whose sense of happiness is not attached to the conditions of this world. Because those will rise and those will fall. And there will be tragedy and there will be pain. And there will be joy and there will be triumph. And everything else. And it is a roller coaster. Happy are those who aren't riding that roller coaster. Happy are those whose joy, whose purpose, whose happiness is centered not in the conditions around them, in the temporal, but in the eternal reality of life and love in God. Happy are those who don't ride the ups and downs on a daily basis. And you know those people who invest in the stock market and they look at the newspaper every day? At any rate, they're constantly checking their phone. What's my stock doing? What's my stock doing? How are they doing? They're frantic, right? Ah, I lost $3. You know, and then 10 minutes later, oh, I got $5. And then, you know, an hour later, oh, I'm down $10. They're all over the place. Because they pinned their happiness to the circumstance. And it's far happier the investor who says, eh, no, it's invested. Far happier we when we place our joy not in the temporal things which will fade, but in the eternal which does not and never will. Happy are the peacemakers. Well, that one seems easier. Yeah, of course, we love to make peace. That's great. That one we feel like, oh yeah, of course, you could be happy making peace. Who wouldn't be? But who really is? Because to make peace, you've got to go to war. To make peace, you have to step into the middle of the conflict, right? You don't make peace from over here. Peacemakers enter into it. And now, there's no war zone here in Canada, although sometimes the 401 qualifies, but there's no war zone here for us to just walk into and start patching up peace. Not literally. But there are war zones. There are groups of hatred and, and, and jealousy. There's even you know, the pettiness of this neighbor who did that to our lawn and that neighbor who did that to our driveway and that one who let their dog do whatever to everyone's lawn. You know, There's workplace animosity. There's family strife. There are all the things that are just part of life but are opportunities for us to make peace. And what it requires is for us to walk into the middle of it. To walk into the middle of it and to answer the anger and the jealousy and all whatever it is. To answer it not with a return of more anger, more pettiness, more jealousy, more backbiting, etc., more gossip, whatever it is. But to answer it with love. 
Jesus didn't come down to earth and say, you know, crucifixion is bad, you shouldn't do that, death shouldn't be the, the, the way we run our world. He actually went to the cross. And by go doing so, denied the power of death. And so, blessed are those, happy are those, willing to step into the fight, bearing the weapons not of the world, again, anger and violence and whatnot, but who are willing to step into the fight with the weapon of God, which is forgiveness, redemption, healing, love. Happy are those peacemakers. Happy are you when people revile you, when people tell lies about you. Oh, happy are you on that day. Jump for joy when they insult you. Jump for joy when they hate you. Jump for joy when they slander you. Woo! Love that. Why? Our world is broken. We can't deny that. It's a fact. Our world is broken. And if we conform to it, if we let ourselves break with it, then the world will have no problem with us. If their world is violent and we commit violence, then we fit right in. If our world is greedy and we act in selfishness and greed, then we'll fit right in. If our world is, is afraid and fearful and hateful, and we are afraid and fearful and hateful, then we fit right in. And we're agreeing with the spirit of the age. Happy, happy are those who are not fitting in with the spirit of the age. Happy are those who don't fit in with the brokenness of the world, but who rather stand athwart it, who say, no, no, this is not what God meant for us. This is not who God made us to be. No, this is not the world that God wants. Happy are those. Because again, they have not placed their sense of self in any of the things around them. They have placed their sense of self. They have placed themselves in the eternal truth of God. And the, the winds of fads and trends, the winds of violence and hatred, all of that is not their defining story. Their defining story is the redemptive love of the God who would die for them rather than kill them. The God who would suffer for them rather than torture them. The God who gave everything rather than take it all. Happy in heart. Ultimately, the most profound realization in our search for happiness is that the happiest man who walked hung on the cross. And that as he hung there, he was as happy as we could be. Now, not situationally happy, obviously. He suffered. He cried out in pain. He asked God why he had been abandoned. And a surface level, on a day-to-day, -day, no, you wouldn't call him happy. But at the core of his being, down at the very center of who we are and what we are, he was at unity and peace with the Father. That is happy. And that happiness didn't show up to our eyes on the cross, but it was evident in the empty tomb. It was evident in the risen Christ. It was evident in the ascending Christ. And it is evident in the life that the church shares. Evident Happy are we when we are weak like God. Happy are we when we empty ourselves rather than filling ourselves up. Happy are we when we give ourselves for the sake of the other rather than taking from the other for our sake. Happy are we because we are living God's life. We 
we are sharing in God's love. good news of our salvation brought to Mary by the angel, hear us, O Lord. 
by the mystery of the word made flesh, hear us, O Lord. By the birth in time of the timeless Son of God, hear us, O Lord. By the manifestation of the King of glory to the shepherds and magi, hear us, O Lord. By the submission of the Maker of the world to Mary and Joseph of Nazareth, hear us, By the baptism of the Son of God in the River Jordan, hear us, O Lord. Grant that the kingdoms of this world may become the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hear us, O Lord. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners invites us to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. 